All right. So in this video, I'm going to look at geometric constraints and go through each one of them. I'm going to go through them quickly because in the practical, exa practical examples later, it'll become more obvious. But I'll, I'll have to cover them just briefly here at this point. So geometric constraints. We we'll choose the first pal to icon on the palette here, and the first palette or the first icon on this toolbox is called Smart Constraint Elements. I'm going to say ignore that for now because that is an automation tool. It does some constraining automatically and I'm going to do a separate video on automation. And just a quick note to say I tend not to use automation at all because it does things how I don't want them to be done and I, <laughs> I'm a control freak. So I'm going to skip over that straight away. The second one is constrain two constructions to be tangent. Now the two types of constructions that we can use with tangent are obviously circles or ellipses and lines. We can you we can constrain ellipses to be our circles to be tangential to circles and lines to be tangential to circles. So let's do a quick example. A little line, a little circle, and apply the constraint. Remember to keep convert constructions on and join ends of constructions off. Select the two elements and accept. You can see here now we have a new graphical element as opposed to the, the one I showed you earlier, which is a little arrow for the directional constraint. This is a tangential constraint, and it looks just like that. A double-headed arrow. And if we modify and resolve, we can test and prove that the tangential constraint works. OK. Oh, I should mention, of course, that circles can be tangential to circles. So there's a triple tangent, and we could even put another circle in the middle for our triple tan circle. And as we modify and resolve, all solutions remain valid. And the last one is an ellipse. Of course, tangents don't tangents don't have to be on the outside of circles; they can also be on the inside as well. So now we have an ellipse, which is tangential to the inside of a circle. And remember to remove a constraint. Just delete it. And now if I modify and resolve, nothing is happening to that ellipse, just to the three circles which have their constraints still active. And I'll delete that or undo that. Move on to the next tool in the toolbox, which is perpendicular. I suppose the most obvious use of perpendicular. Let's, um, let's just note this quickly. And let's see, the next one is perpendicular. So the most obvious use of a perpendicular constraint is across two lines. Select the two lines and accept. And notice immediately how our constructions are created with the yellow lines and the constraint is added with the blue graphic. This blue graphic for the perpendicular constraint is a square. I just note if I turn on fill, it's a solid square. And turn it off again. I tend to work with fill turned off when working with constructions and constraints. If I check that and modify it, you can see while the direction of one of the lines has changed, the other one automatically follows to keep it perpendicular. There's more to perpendicular than just lines though. We can also make ellipses perpendicular to lines. And it has gone snapped to perpendicular of the major axis on the ellipse. OK. Move on to parallel. And 
once again the obvious uses were two lines and once again we also have the option to use an ellipse so let's apply parallel to the two lines and accept modify to test them and as the direction of one line changes the other line follows so we can see our new graphical element there it's a square with a line through it that shows the parallel relationship and constraint let's apply that to the ellipse and line and once again both constructions remain parallel moving on then to fixed angle of line or ellipse well I've already shown this one but just for completeness sake complete completeness sake let's add it in we can have a line and as you guessed it we can also have an ellipse so let's fix that line and fix the ellipse. Lock has options here for horizontal or vertical. There is no horizontal or vertical constraint. It's just that when you draw a line and you use the angle lock, it will modify the line and snap it to a horizontal first before it applies the directional constraint. That's not a horizontal constraint, it's still just a normal directional constraint. The only thing that MicroStation has done different is it has modified the line before applying the constraint. If I undo that and go to vertical, it's exactly the same thing. If we choose none, that simply means constrain the direction at which the line is drawn on the design as it is. So constrain the direction as shown. None means stay where you are kind of thing.